welcome to St Bennet's online. For now our church buildings are closed but our thousand year tradition at St Bennet's of prayer and worship goes on. So welcome to this service, particularly to any who are joining us for the first time. If you'd like to find out more about St Bennet's, do visit our website, stbennetschurch.org. Now, as we prepare to worship, we keep silence for a moment. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare to celebrate the presence of Christ in word and sacrament, let us call to mind and confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor, in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
that all our doings without love are nothing worth. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. O Lord, you have enticed me, and I was enticed. You have overpowered me, and you have prevailed. I have become a laughing stock all day long. Everyone mocks me. For whenever I speak, I must cry out. I must shout violence and destruction. For the word of the Lord has become for me a reproach and derision all day long. If I say, I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, then within me there is something like a burning fire shut up in my bones. I am weary with holding it in and I cannot, for I hear many whispering, terror is all around, denounce him, let us denounce him. All my close friends are watching for me to stumble. Perhaps he can be enticed and we can prevail against him and take our revenge on him. But the Lord is with me like a dread warrior. Therefore my persecutors will stumble and they will not prevail. They will be greatly shamed for they will not succeed. Their eternal dishonor will never be forgotten. O Lord of hosts, you test the righteous. You see the heart and the mind. Let me see your retribution upon them, for to you I have committed my cause. Palabra de Dios. This is the word of the Lord. Te hablamos, Señor. Thanks be to God. sake have I suffered reproach. Shame has covered my face. I have become a stranger to my kindred, an alien to my mother's children. Zeal for your house has eaten me up. The scorn of those who scorn you has fallen upon me. I humbled myself with fasting, but that was turned to my reproach. 
Answer me, Lord, for your loving kindness is good. Turn to me in the multitude of your mercies. Hide not your face from your servant. Be swift to answer me, for I am in trouble. Draw near to my soul and redeem me. Deliver me because of my enemies. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning is now and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. Should we continue in sin in order that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin go on living in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptised into Christ Jesus were baptised into his death? Therefore we have been buried by hi with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body of sin might be destroyed and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For whoever has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above the master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher and the slave like the master. If they have called the master of the house Beelzebul, how much more will they malign those of his household? So have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? Yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. So do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Everyone, therefore, who acknowledges me before others... I also will acknowledge before my Father in heaven. But whoever denies me before others, I also will deny before my Father in heaven. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to the earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and one's foes will be members of one's own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, 
and whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Those who find their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We've recently bought a new Bible for our household, as if you might think we didn't have enough already. But this is a different sort of Bible. It is called the Cleaning Bible by Kim Woodburn and Aggie McKenzie. Kim and Aggie's Complete Guide to Household Management. Lockdown has meant we've had to say goodbye to our cleaner, and we've been trying to learn the best way to clean the house ourselves. You see, I am of the generation of white middle-class males who have always had their cleaning done by someone else. And for many years now we've had a cleaner, usually female, usually an immigrant, and always low paid. Now in the new world of Covid, when no one else may come into our house, we are doing our cleaning ourselves. And for the first time in my life I'm learning how it should be done. I won't quote extensively from Kim and Aggie's excellent Bible, but I can warmly recommend thoroughness and professionalism in the area of cleaning and polishing. As it happens, they definitely rule out the use of aerosol sprays, which seems to fit our post-Covid care for the air we breathe. Learning this new set of skills has made me realise how privileged my life has been. My upbringing, education and career have followed an inherited pattern fulfilling most if not all expectations I might have had at the outset. My face fitted the Church of England criteria for being a priest back in the 1970s. My life since ordination and into retirement has been, if not stress-free, at least a matter for continuous thanksgiving. But I realise how unequal our society is, especially as we are learning daily in the area of race. And I wonder how far, with the privileges I have enjoyed, I have unwittingly been complicit in this inequality. Getting down on my knees to clean the bathroom floor is literally a lesson in humility, and I have enjoyed this surprisingly enjoyable task as an opportunity for praying for a more just society. Today's Gospel reading has Jesus giving instructions to the twelve disciples as he sends them out on their mission. Their mission is going to be sacrificial. They will share his persecution and undergo his suffering. The first thing he says is, A disciple is not above the teacher, nor a slave above a master. It is enough for the disciple to be like the teacher, and the slave like the master. Here he is preparing his disciples to receive the same treatment that he will receive. But to our ears we hear this as a call that between slave and master, between disciple and teacher, there shall be equality. He tells his disciples not to be afraid, have no fear of them, for nothing is covered up that will not be uncovered, and nothing secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered, proclaim from the housetops. Here he is reminding his followers that his lot will be theirs, rejection and death, but they are to remember that in the resurrection all will be vindicated, all cover-ups exposed, all secrets revealed, darkness brought into the light. How telling this saying is, in a turbulent world, where re-evaluating our history has become all important. He goes on, Do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. This is the second time Jesus has urged his followers not to be afraid, for he knows that fear will bring about the abandoning of their work. Fear undermines the message of love. Do not fear persecution, he says. Rather fear God, who can consign body and soul to hell. So it is more fearful to disobey God than to be put to death by persecutors. Even sparrows, the cheapest things sold for food, are in the keeping of God. Are not two sparrows sold for a penny? 
yet not one of them will fall to the ground unperceived by your father. And even the hairs of your head are all counted. Do not be afraid. You are of more value than many sparrows. Here is comfort. Our Heavenly Father cares for us. Then finally there is the troubling passage. Do not think that I have come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother. Whoever loves father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Following Jesus is all or it is nothing, because the mission for which he is preparing his disciples is a total commitment. It comes above family and before household. The end is the cross, and the sacrifice of Jesus is to be shared by his followers. So Jesus is preparing his followers for a life of service which is likely to end in persecution and martyrdom. The only way to live this life is to put aside all fear, to depend completely on God and his unfailing providence, and to follow in the steps of Jesus, sustained by his teaching and fired by his example. It's an inspiring model of discipleship. It reminds me of those other words of Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount earlier in St Matthew's Gospel. Be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. This model remains an inspiration because it connects us to Jesus' first mission way back in first century Palestine. But it doesn't fit the call we have received, especially as we remember that we are not perfect, that we are full of fears, and that we depend on people and things other than God. Also, we do not live in first century Palestine. We live in the light of the resurrection, in post-Pentecost times, and we share in the apostolic mission of the whole church. In such a context, our discipleship is formed out of our own gifts and sins, out of our particular enthusiasms and longings, enriched by our mistakes, deepened by our sorrows, and marked by our joy in God. So what should we do to follow Jesus? As an example of a completely different way, let me tell you about one of my favourite saints, St Clare. Back in 1212, at a young age, Clare was inspired by the person and teachings of St Francis to embrace poverty by having nothing. Together with her sister, she formed a poor community based at San Damiano in Assisi. She lived there in seclusion for 41 years, of which for half she was sick and bedridden. Now that is some lockdown. It was a life of contemplation, reflecting on the poverty of Christ in the Incarnation. In her writings, Claire invites us to focus on a life marked by fatigue, thirst, loneliness, misunderstanding, and all the daily business of living. She tells us that we find the highest spiritual realities in the most ordinary. She never separates spiritual experience from domestic work, for there she discovers God in his humanity. Indeed, she stretches the logic of the Incarnation to its ultimate. We reach the poverty of Jesus by travelling the very narrow, banal path of daily life. She wrote, The blessedness of poverty is inscribed on the monotony of our days. We find the Lord where we are in a hundred humdrum things. George Herbert put this another way in his poem The Elixir, one of our best-loved Anglican hymns. Teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see, and what I do in anything to do it as for thee. A servant with this clause makes drudgery divine, who sweeps a room as for thy laws, makes that and the action fine. Our weeks of lockdown are teaching us many unexpected aspects of being human. 
Among them are the loneliness of isolation and the longing love for absent family and friends. At the same time, we experience the sorrow and grief at the injustices of our society, which COVID-19 has exposed, most notably the disproportionate effect of the virus on the poor, the aged, and the black and minority ethnic communities. For those of us not working, or on the front line in the NHS, we can only weep for the suffering of so many and continue as servants to follow the master. The slave, as Jesus tells us, is not greater than the master. It is enough for the slave to be like the master. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We affirm our faith in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you put fire into Jeremiah's bones so that he would declare your truth in the face of derision. We pray and give thanks for all those who persist in their faith despite persecution. Put your fire into your church, Lord so that we can speak of your truth to an uncomprehending world. Forgive us when we fail to hear and communicate your word amidst the clamour of all the other voices around us. In your mercy, strengthen our weakness. Help us to remember that you are always by us. We pray for the leaders of the church, and especially for Stephen and Dagmar, and for Anna, Zach, Philippa, and the PCC at St. Bennet's. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O Lord of all, we pray for a healing of the strife between the peoples of this world. Help us to seek forgiveness sincerely and humbly when we have done wrong and to grant it gladly when it is asked of us. We pray for the joy and liberation of reconciliation throughout the world. We pray for all those who are swept up in pain and anger against the injustice they have experienced. We pray that their voices may be heard and their wounds healed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who have heard bad news about their jobs over recent weeks. We pray for all those who are looking for work, and especially for the students who have just graduated. Dear Lord, come to us in our uncertainty. Help us to trust in your provision, no matter how bleak the prospect looks. Lord, in your mercy... 
hear our prayer. Dear Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, whether in mind, body or spirit. We pray especially for all those suffering from COVID-19 in countries without the medical facilities to alleviate their pain. Lord, we pray for all those communities around the world who are particularly vulnerable to infection, as we acknowledged with sorrow the huge inequalities that leave these communities so exposed. We entrust the pandemic with all its ramifications to you, believing in your mercy. We thank you with all our hearts for the skill and commitment of our medical workers and researchers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we rejoice in your kingdom. Death has been overcome. We pray for all those who have died, and especially those close to us, and those who have died recently. May we meet them with you in your glorious light. We pray for Johnny Polk, and for those whose year's mind falls this week. Constance Ann Giddy, Jane Nessinger, John Allen Gulland, John Philip Sykes, James Parkin, and Gertrude Broom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share in his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who is sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. 
By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh. As your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us, and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will, and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. source of all holiness, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. So, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people. And gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of Our Lady Mary, St. Benedict, and all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread.
Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. The body of Christ. The blood of Christ. I invite you now to make an act of spiritual communion using one of the prayers in the video or on the order of service.
Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for feeding us at the supper of your Son. Sustain us with your Spirit, that we may serve you here on earth until our joy is complete in heaven, and we share in the eternal banquet with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.